Yeah, so let's have a look at um, how we actually use the user controller. Let's start out by just, I'll just show you the route again. So here we have the route, and uh, I'm going to hit the controller of update profile photo. Now, just to show you what I'm actually sending from the back, uh, from the front end, I'm just going to jump into another file here, and that's going to be the image, not the image service, but the auth service, there we go. And I'm just going to move down to show you what I'm actually sending to the back end. So I'm saying user, update profile photo, send in the ID of the current user, and then send in the actual photo with the name of photo. Okay, remember that. So I'm sending that as the body inside the request. And then this is what I'm looking at for the resource size. I'm sending the ID of the user in the end, and the controller is going to be profile photo. That's lucky, because that actually matches the index file I just showed you a second ago, right here, um, slash profile photo. So that's good. And then um, the last thing you need to know is that I send a put request, and I send the ID and then the photo as the body. So that's all I have to send. And how do I actually use that on the back end? So the back end is going to hit this uh, function right here. It's going to pull out the ID of the, of the user as the parameter. It's going to find the user, and when the user is found, it's calling this callback function, saying if there's a user and you actually added a photo to the body, which we just did, then upload the image, base64 image, and this is an image helper, again, that I, that I got from um, our good friend Patrick Riley, and that pretty much takes a base64 image and uploads it to a temp directory and puts it into Cloudinary in the end. When that is done, you see I sent the photo here as well. When that is done, I'm getting back a result, and that result has a URL. This is from Cloudinary, and the result is actually just a string. And let's just let me just show you that on Cloudinary because when I get a result back here, let me just go to um, to the Node.js code again just to show you. I actually get something like this explaining what kind of image I uploaded, right? So that I've saved in the database now. Great. And then I'm going to save that inside the user's photo, and then I'll save the user. Done deal. So now the user is saved with the actual photo, and that's how I update the profile image. So now let's look at the, at the image helper and what that is all about. So I'll go down here to the helpers, and I actually have added two new helpers here under server, API, components, helper. I have the cloudinary helper and the image helper, and this is where we're going first, the image helper. But you'll notice that the first thing it does is actually require the cloudinary helper, and um, again, both of these are pulled in from the code that we see here in the tutorial right here. So I haven't done that much change in here to actually make it work. So everything can be found in these tutorials. And of course, it's also on the course planner that you can download if you want to. But what do we actually do? Well, first we decode the actual image here. So when we hit the upload, we get a base64 image from the client side. And we decode that into an image buffer. That's because we want to write this into the temp path. And that's actually what we're doing here using async waterfall, meaning that we're going to do them one by one here. Then the first thing we do is we're going to write the image right here. We're going to write that image to the temp path, which we specified up here in the controller being temp something, something, something. It's going to be deleted after, so it doesn't matter where to put it. So we write that image down there as a real file, actually, and then we upload that real file. So that's step two. So it says, that, um, take the file, convert it from base64 into a buffer, save it on the disk somewhere in the temp directory. When that is done, call this function, take that temp path and upload it into Cloudinary. So this is how you upload a file into Cloudinary. It's that simple, right? And um, you can go and read about this on Cloudinary's page, but we're just using the Cloudinary helper to call upload. And I'll show you that in a second. So I'm sending in a path and I'm sending in a callback. So when I'm done, I also make sure I clean up the temp path and I then send the last callback just printing out if we find any errors. That's all I have to do. So that's kind of what we're doing here in the upload base64. The decode base64 image is a great function to have because this is actually a decoding setup to take data from base64 and convert it into something we can use. So I just want to show you that you can always use this 
uh, decode base 64 for your own system as well. So what is the Cloudinary helper doing for us? It's pretty simple and I'm not going to show you these. Um, you have to find your name, your API and your secret from Cloudinary. But what I will do is I will go in here and I'll show you where mine are stored. If you go into the dashboard, here they are all of them, right? Mine is Elbilde as the cloud name. So going back to the code, the cloud name here will be Elbilde. So if I didn't, if I want to hard code it in here, I could write um, Elbilde right here, okay? The second thing that I'm going to pull in is this guy, the API key. So let's just add that as well, just to show you. The API key, and then the last is the secret. I'm not going to show you that one, but that you can reveal here and then you'll see the secret and you'll have to add that one as well. Of course, I didn't want them to be specified in here, so I added them inside our config file under the shared setup here, um, index here. And that's where these guys are coming from. So you can just go and specify them here directly or you can go into the config file and specify them because then you can start specifying one for development, one for production, one for test if you want to. And you can go read about that and you can actually see the examples if you want to do it. So the last thing is actually we just use Cloudinary's API to actually upload the system. And that's all we have to do. Then the file is actually uploaded.